We're going to continue talking about machine translation. Before we talked about translation at the word level. How do you translate one word to another word? And today we're going to change that a little bit and we're going to focus on phrase-based translation. In phrase-based translation, you're translating entire phrases from one language to another. And this handles some of the oddities that we see in real language and allows us to create better translations. You can have models that capture non-compositional phrases. You can use the context of the words that you're translating to make a better translation. So for example, some words translate differently depending on the context. And with more data, you can memorize really long phrases that you see a lot. And this allows you to create perfect translations for things that are translated frequently. And until recently, this was the standard model for machine translation. We'll talk a little bit later about the new models that have superseded it. But in any event, these models show the power of using context and we'll build on them shortly. So let's take an example sentence. Natürlich hat John Spaß am Spiel. If you take a look, we can translate these phrase by phrase. So natürlich isn't going to be translated as a single word. It's going to be translated as of course. And Spaß am are two words in German that are going to be translated to fun with the. And we also see that the phrases can be reordered. So for example, John and has flipped their positions. And these are the two things that happen in a phrase-based translation model. You translate phrases by themselves and you reorder the resulting phrases in your target language. We're going to be talking about phrase tables as we move forward in our discussion of phrase-based translation. Phrase tables take some phrase, such as natürlich, and provides a translation with a probability for each of the alternative ways that this phrase could be translated into English. So for example, 0.5 probability you have, of course, and you have probabilities for other options. And because this is phrase-based translation, this includes things like punctuation. And as we look at, say, for example, a real phrase table, things become a little bit more complicated. The phrase table captures the kinds of variation that you see in real data. You see things like possessives and prepositions and determiners that can be translated when you have a German phrase like den Vorschlag, the accusative case of a masculine noun. And this can also demonstrate lexical variation that you can have proposal or suggestion and hopefully we'll be able to use some of the context to choose the right selection with our language model that we'll be seeing a little bit later that will tell us which of these possible translations of den Vorschlag we should be using. And so we've been talking about phrases very abstractly, and at this point you may recall that we talked about things like noun phrases and verb phrases when we talked about parsing. And so a reasonable thing you might think is, are we going to use those phrases as our phrases for machine translation? And people have looked at that, but typically no, we're not going to use that. We're going to use ad hoc phrases, whatever our model can discover as good phrases to translate. And this allows us to capture things like Spaß am. So Spaß am literally means in German fun at the. Am is a contraction of at and the. And we often translate that as fun with the. This doesn't correspond to a prepositional phrase because the object of the preposition is missing. We have many different objects of the preposition and we don't want to learn a phrase for all of the possible objects of the preposition, we want to learn that when you see Spaß am, that means fun with the, and you'll fill in the blank later. And this allows us to translate things like prepositions that can be pretty tricky. And oftentimes the thing that you're attaching to or the object of the pre preposition determines which of the possible prepositions you'll be using. And phrase-based translations allow you to capture that. And if you do use linguistic phrases, you often end up with a worse and more complicated model. So how do we actually tie this all together into a single model? The way that we do this is we combine 
the probability from the phrase-based translation model with the probability from a powerful language model. So this breaks down into two parts. We have the language model and we have the phrase-based translations. How do we compute the probability of a phrase-based translation? This depends on the individual phrases within the phrase-based translation. So we take a look at all of the phrases from I to L of the translation, and we look at the phrase table probability for that translation. We, that is just a probability by itself. We multiply all of the phrases together, and then we multiply that by a reordering model that says, as we move around the different phrases in the phrase-based translation, how coherent and how likely is the shuffling that we're doing. And this is often language specific. So for example, German likes to move verbs at the end of the sentence. In French and Spanish, you have the modifiers coming after nouns. So this sort of reordering can capture that. This is a very high level discussion of phrase-based translation. Uh, we're not going to talk about too much more of the details. There are additional slides online that you can look at. But this should give you a sense of the kinds of things that went into phrase-based translation models, which were the predominant way of doing machine translation up until very recently. And hopefully what you take away from this is that phrases are important. Phrases allow you to use context in your translations. But where are the problems? So in the phrase-based translation model, you can only use the context of your individual phrase. And the phrases are mostly independent. You depend on the language model to glue together translations across different phrases in the same sentence, and that often isn't enough. You want to be able to use wider context to choose the correct translation. And the phrases may have fuzzy boundaries. You might want to blur one phrase into another to get a better translation, and these models don't allow you to do that because each phrase is discrete and independent. So how can we get a better model that ties all of this together? And that's what we're going to be talking about next, neural translation models that allow you to have these properties.